Today, we're going to talk about a common circuit that is found within an integrated circuit or microcontroller GPIO. Open collector or open drain outputs is a phrase you'll hear frequently when discussing electronics, so let's take a couple of minutes to get a good understanding of what this means and why it's important. We'll start with open collectors and then quickly discuss open drain as they operate on the same principle. To understand this, we first need to know a little bit about bipolar junction transistors or BJTs. There are three terminals, a base, emitter, and collector. You apply a voltage on the base and a little bit of current flows from the base to the emitter, but more importantly, this allows a larger amount of current to flow from the collector to the emitter at the same time. With this principle, you can use a BJT as a switch or an amplifier. This is why BJTs are so powerful. With a relatively small base current, you can make significant changes in the collector to emitter current. Now, applying that new or newly reviewed knowledge about BJTs, when you hear that a device has an open collector output, it means that anything that is connected to the peripheral is actually connected to the collector of a BJT internal to the device. So when the IC output is high or low, it's simply changing the impedance between the output and ground, not necessarily that it's a high voltage or low voltage. Instead of directly controlling the output voltage, you're controlling whether it's a high impedance, sometimes referred to as high Z, or whether it is low impedance or low Z. With an open collector GPIO, if you want a high voltage in the high impedance state, you will need a pull-up resistor or something like that. Sometimes this is provided internally, sometimes it's not, and you need to provide it externally. Now, as promised, I'll briefly go over an open drain output. An open drain output is configured like an open collector, but uses a MOSFET instead of a BJT. Much like there's a base, emitter, and collector of a BJT, in a MOSFET, there's the gate, source, and drain. Now, the output of the device is connected to the drain of an internal MOSFET. The internal IC control is connected to the gate of the MOSFET, which opens or closes like a switch. If there is a high voltage applied to the gate, then the switch closes, showing a low impedance between the drain and ground. If a low voltage is applied to the gate, then the switch opens and there is a high impedance between the open drain and ground. Just like with the internal BJT, in a high impedance mode, if you want the output at a high or low voltage, you'll need a pull-up or pull-down resistor. Check with your datasheet to see if this is provided internal to the IC you're working with or not and pull-up resistors are significantly more common than pull-down resistors. The benefit of an open collector or open drain is that it is very effective for sinking current. As we've mentioned in other tutorials, sinking current is basically when your device has externally generated current flow through it to ground. With an internal transistor connected directly to ground, you are able to attain a very low impedance, allowing a much higher amount of current to flow through than some other internal configurations available. Compared to most of the other available internal configurations, this has lower impedance, lower capacitance, and greater immunity to electrical noise, which is why open collector or open drain outputs are common. But life is always about trade-offs, and this applies in engineering as well. Open collector outputs are very weak when it comes to sourcing current. While they can sync current very well, they are, for all practical purposes, flat out unable to source current unless the internal transistor is a PNP versus the more common NPN type transistor. Of course, the PNP transistors are then unable to be good current sinks, so choose which one you want and you'll be fine. I hope that this brief overview of open collector GPIOs was helpful and that the next time you're talking about them or trying to figure out what's going on with an IC or microcontroller that happens to have them, that you have a better idea of what you're doing. I appreciate you watching and wanted to give a brief shout out to our friends of CircuitBread who help us to bring you this free content. The best way you can support us is to go check out our friends of CircuitBread and see if any of their free tools or educational resources or samples can help you out. As always, if this video is helpful to you, give it a like and subscribe to our channel and we will see you in the next one. Take care. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. Did you know that circuitbread.com also has a ton of other stuff, including free electronics and electrical engineering tools? Besides a scientific calculator, we have a few dozen other tools, including a delta Y calculator, LED resistor calculator, a binary, decimal, hexadecimal, and more converter, as well as a slew of other unit converters. Go check them out.